I've seen a few videos talk about the greenhouse um, garden pot method, so I decided to give it a try myself. I've seen various people do it, like Mossy, Easy Lily, etc. But I always kind of just dismissed it since I used retaining soil, and that, that stuff was always kind of a joke to me. But hey, we're on the beach farm, you know, where it's meant to be, and let's give it a try. And I've made a big upgrade. Instead of having to wait for Robin, I can just pop up this menu right here. Okay, it's a tractor garage, but it has the wrong sprite. Whatever, the mod just probably breaks it. Let's get one of those built. Oh, and the tractor's not there. Oh, Oh man, I really hope this mod just doesn't cause more problems than solutions. <laughs> oh my god, Demetrius? I hate you. Whatever, I'm taking bats because I'm a chad. Okay, it's finally here. A little bit of sleep and fixed it. So I guess let's just go to town now. I'm gonna destroy these parsnips because I hate them. These parsnips are standing in the way of progress. Let's turn on fast speed so we can create the deafening sound effects once again. The stupid dandelion or daffodils blocking my way and we don't have enough inventory space. <laughs> okay, we finally got it. Uh, let's get Iridium Tools, I think. Alright, the farm is all cleared up. And for anyone who's out of the loop, you might be wondering, Waligug, why the heck do you need to do it on the beach farm? And why did the heck do you need to bother using sheds? Well, there's one thing that's very different about the beach farm. So, as you can see right here, this is sand, not dirt. If we just go over to some dirt, you know, hoe a little, hoe a little space... You know, grab our parsnips, plant them down, all 999 you start with. We try to chuck down an iridium sprinkle, you know, it works just fine. So then, you know, we just run up to bed, and all of our crops are watered, meaning we don't have to do any annoying and tedious manual watering. However, on the beach farm, if we try to plant these same parsnips, let's chuck down a few, grab ourselves a sprinkler. It doesn't work. Sprinklers do not work on this terrain. Meaning essentially we have a ton of space. I believe the beach farm actually has more space than the standard farm to place crops. But it's kind of null and void because you'd have to manually water it. And when you have a field this big, for example, because you know you have you want to use all the space on the farm, it's it's not really an option, obviously, to manually water everything. I mean, in theory you could, but um I'm sure as hell not going to. So if we just back out so all those crops disappear, essentially what you can do, there's an item exists that is called the garden pot. Basically, you get it. Um, I forget what exactly triggers it. After you complete the greenhouse, Evelyn will visit your farm and give you the greenhouse uh, and give you the green and give you the garden pot recipe along with uh, one garden pot yourself. So you can start making them yourself. They're kind of annoying to craft normally. They take a ton of um, fiber. They take a ton of fine quartz and clay and stone. So they're a bit of a nuisance, but with the power of mods, we can kind of sort that part out because we just spawned in 3000. So essentially what I'll do a very small version of the method. Chuck down one of these bad boys, the shed, head on in. And then we go ahead and place every single little corner with a shed, the garden pot I mean. You now have a bunch of tiles that, you know, you basically can plant crops on. Basically just giving you more crop tile to expand your empire, make a ton of money. And now you, be, you may be thinking to yourself, well, Wallagug, this doesn't solve your initial problem of not wanting to water, right? Because you now, now you just have to manually water like even more, because if you cover your entire farm with these guys, then you're completely screwed. I mean, even with an iridium watering can, it takes like a couple seconds per water, so it's just complete hell. Well, thankfully, an item called retaining soil exists. Deluxe retaining soil, this has a 100% chance to stay watered overnight. If you just go ahead, throw it down and all these bad boys. We do need to water them once, but that isn't really that bad since afterwards we don't need to water them. So we have this all watered up. If we go ahead, go to sleep, we can see that it's still all watered. So with the watering problem out of the way, we need to choose a crop to plant in here. And there's one, a few criteria we're looking for. We want it to regrow because, you know, we don't really want to be constantly replanting the crops. And we want it to be relatively simple to get. Well, uh, the second criteria doesn't really matter since that basically strikes out like 95 of the regrowable crops in the game. And the most efficient regrowable one uh, well, straight off the bat is ancient fruit, but there's a little bit of a problem when it comes to that. So Concerned Ape obviously saw this strategy coming, so if you try to put an ancient fruit here, first we can find out the ancient fruit is, <laughs> is a girl, so um, yeah. But obviously we can't put them in the pot. So the second best one for money is going to be the pineapple. You can get pineapples in various ways. They get the drop from monsters in the volcano, and... I don't know, I think there's you can like trade for them at the island trader, but I don't know. I just kill a few monsters, plant them, and then seed maker them. So once we get all those down, I'll just instantly grow them. They're gonna constantly regrow. They automatically get watered, so it's <laughs> obviously really good money. And I believe I have uh, automate set up, so if I grab myself path, in theory, I'm gonna lose like 1% efficiency or something. If I get rid of this guy, turn on the automate overlay. Okay, never mind, I misremembered. <laughs> automate does not let me automatically harvest crops. But you know, my point still stands, so pretty much all we need to do is harvest 
harvest. So if we just chuck a chest down in here so we can keep track of it. You know, this is pretty good money since now we don't really have to water. And obviously you could just do this on the normal farm, but you know, you'd have to redo it with seasons and the retaining soil is kind of annoying to make. But right here, we just have a shed money maker, but there's even more. So I was only using a small shed before. This is an upgraded shed. It only takes around 300 stone, a little bit of gold. And obviously you need a normal shed because it's an upgrade, but you can fit even more pineapples. I believe 139 pineapples in here, which is crazy. So we're just gonna chuck on harvest with scythe, go through and harvest everything and see how much money this ends up making us. Okay, I'm slightly off, 137. And it's actually gonna be 136 since I'm making a little bit of a chest. But there we go, that is that is our very first shed. So I'm just gonna set up like five more of these, run them for like a month and see how much money we end up making from this method. I changed my mind and I only did three because I realized if I can't be bothered to make three of them, sorry, more than three of them with cheats, then who the heck is gonna be bothered to make more than three of them without cheats? So what we're gonna do is grab this bad boy, all of our profits so far. We're actually gonna chuck this on second thought. Um, chuck all that. And then everything should be water because of auto water. And then let's let's get to collecting. So it takes seven days for them to grow. So not bad, to be honest. We're just going to be spam sleeping, coming out, harvesting them all with our scythe, and then uh, heading to bed and see what kind of monthly income we're going to be snagging. Also, I'm going to be grabbing the crops worth 10% more perk because, come on, we want maximum profit. Right, sleeping time. First harvest day finished and we have all of these. Unfortunately, because we do have to use retaining soil and we can't use something like um, fertilizer that could increase the quality of the crops we're getting. We're getting kind of low quality crops, but it's not really a huge deal. I could get this. I don't really think it's gonna affect the experiment though because of the fact that it only takes seven days to grow. So it'd be like a weird decimal. At least I think so. I'm honestly not sure. I'll just go out like one day early and see if it's uh, grown. Looks like this time we got a lot more silver quality and a lot more gold quality so hey that's big stonks probably because we're higher farming level i think that's uh what effect quality i learned if i walk through while holding right click it makes a deafening sound and i think about the same gold and i think more silver we got i think exactly this many gold last time i'll show it up on screen editor or whatever but this is three out of four and wow this is like a lot of pineapples and obviously this isn't exactly accurate to how much work you'd have to put in since you would be harvesting it by hand but i think this is a decent indicator just like how much money it would be if you were willing to put in the work and obviously you could do even more and if you were in like multiplayer and had slaves to help you you can make huge money all right the last one harvested this is all we got so we got about what i expected like silver gold normal quality wise but let's see how much money it is that's the real question see if it's worth your time i went and bought a bunch of stuff so i have zero gold now just to kind of easily see how much i have and let's see all right we definitely made at least a million i think that was the million oh no not quite a million so six hundred and forty thousand gold per month is not bad at all for like relatively minimal work like this is probably about as much work as i put in for like a whole ancient field since what is it it's like just over 400 crops so honestly pretty decent 